<clears throat> so we're here on April 25th, 2020, and uh, tonight's session is the final of four sessions that I've been hosting and curating um, under the banner of Blast Your Own Breath, which I founded in Austin in the late 1990s. So Blast Your Own Breath, BYOB, is a now a virtual uh, reading event. And I'm very excited to say that by the end of tonight, we will have heard from 17 individual poets uh, spanning um, the, the so-called nation that we're in. And uh, you know, from Minnesota, New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, and Utah. And maybe I've left out another state or two, or maybe there's a country within the states that hasn't formed yet that <laughs> I'll have to announce later. Uh, I guess props to California for leading in that direction. Um, so yeah, my name is Tammy Gomez. I myself am a poet and I know Danny was so generous trying to get me to read a poem uh, a few Saturdays ago, but it, I'm really trying not to read during these events because I really want this to be a gift that I'm giving to the community uh, for us and to uh, you know, enrich uh, people's ears and minds and hearts with really wonderful words that aren't mine. I will share and I do share in other ways and you know, more often than, than I thought I would by this time in my life. And I, I do honor your invitation for me to do that, but not tonight and not this series. So I'm very excited now to introduce Jessica Helen Lopez, who I met online and I know we have many mutuals and take it away, Jessica share what you want to share. And I think you can unmute your mic. Is that you that can do that? Yeah, I'm unmuted. Can everybody hear me? Thumbs up. Cool. Okay, awesome. All right. So thank you again, Tammy, for inviting me. I really appreciate uh, this platform. I think it's really important during these times. Um, my name is Jessica Helen Lopez. Soy Chicana. Soy Mestiza. Soy Maestra. Soy Madre. Soy Chingona. Um, I was the Poet Laureate of the city of Albuquerque for the years 2014 through 2016, so I'm emeritus. I'm an educator with the Native American Community Academy, um, and I've been an educator with them for about 10 years. I teach poetry primarily, and also indigenous history, culture, and thought, humanities. I also um, am privileged to teach at UNM, University of New Mexico Chicana and Chicano Studies Department. Um, some of the classes I teach are Borderlands Poetics through the lens of Gloria Anzolua and uh, Writers in the Community. And I actually took that class as an undergrad years ago, and Levi Romero was my teacher. Uh, Levi is a very good friend of mine, and he is also my mentor. He would be blushing right now if he were on this uh, Zoom, which hopefully he will be soon, because he's amazing, but also a very humble uh, individual. I respect him very much. Um, and yeah, you know, I recently had a book come out last summer called Provocateur. Check this out. This is the galley proof and it's all schwickle because it's been like buried in my Jeep. I just ordered some new books uh, from my publisher, Swimming with Elephants Publications, and they'll be available if anybody's interested in, in uh, purchasing that. And then uh, this is another uh, uh, chapbook that I have called Cunt Bomb, a reclamation of the word cunt. Um, and I'm going to be reading some pieces out of that. And then um, if I have enough time, we'll see a new piece that I recently wrote. So again, Tammy, thank you. And thank you, everybody, for joining. And I appreciate you all. So, mira, this first piece is called A Love Letter from uh, Chavela Vargas to Frida Kahlo. I'm sure you all are familiar with Frida. And of course, Chavela uh, is, uh, you know, her legacy lives on. And uh, if you didn't know, they were lovers for a while and good friends, you know, for the rest of their lives. But uh, I uh, just wanted to create a type of persona piece because I try to challenge myself the way I do my students in kind of expanding beyond just maybe like um, uh, uh, confessionalism, so to speak. So here this piece is. A love letter from Chavela Vargas to Frida Kahlo. Fridita. You are my shadow twin. My wicked release, my dark and tiny dove. Eres mi beso de plumas del colibri. Ruby-throated hummingbird of the sacred song, main deer of Coyoacan, keeper of the blue house, fawn and fair mexica, sholo isquintli. I knew when I met you on that cobblestone street, I would leave you. Your heart, a nopal, the scarlet flesh of it, throbbing sweet and rich and meant for another. But for a moment, we danced. 
and laughed our way through life. I was your enchanted, enchanted cantante, you my whirling baile, your eyebrows together were a swallow in mid-flight, your lips a blessed of that. And I laid my head in your lap, the plush cushion of your thighs, you smelled of sugar and juice of succulents, tobacco y tequila, you smelled of earth and root, Mexican hawthorn, little manzanita of the desert, red berry and crooked twist spine of bark. I ran my tongue across the railroad of your scars, the brown buttons of your nipples, Fredita, woman of another world, mi Tijuana bride. When I first saw you, knew I would love you, leave you, knowing the remembering is the longest part. Your kisses linger like mezcal on the tongue, the bite of the agave, honey and fire, life and death, sleep and dream, snake and worm, the in-between. And here, aquí, you and I are young forever. Por vida, mijita, forever. Ah, Fridita, Paloma Negra. When I am gone, do not let that man tear you asunder, that man of gluttonous belly and ego, wasteland of no loyalty. Do not let him take your spirit, susto, tethered by a thin string floating into the ether. Do not scissor your hair from scalp, for it is a sacred, snaking, flowing black river of onyx, and I am lost in its currents. Ah, Chulita, woman of wolves, when I first met you, I didn't know what you wanted to tell me, but I shut your mouth with my kisses, and like that, we spent many, many hours. Paloma Negra, Paloma Negra. I grow mad with the hours I am with you. I grow wanton with the hours without you. I am your dedicated soldada. I will wrench and gnash my teeth at those who would harm you. Paloma Negra. Paloma Negra, I am your Chavela, your Isabel of the rugged rainforest of Costa Rica. I am your Caribbean coastline and you, my city girl, Mexicana revolucionaria estudiante, my scholar and warrior, breastplate of emerald parrot. My love for you is a shining obelisk. Paloma Negra, Paloma Negra, I must leave you now. And I know my words pierce the armor of your heart, the burr and needles quilted across your clavicle, your clavicle of tropical bird and song, your fond like clavicle, your clavicle made from my mouth, my searching fingers, my unwavering and unfaltering love, my desire made of lapis on fire, amber on fire, turquoise and coral on fire. I am hammered gold and you the soft dewdrop of the pearl. The skin across your belly is bizcochito soft and I taste the paste of you. Blood rusted red atole, I pinch it between my pursed lips and bleed with you. We are the secreted hushed moonly women, the call of the Yoni sisters. We are the spirited birds who fly above all earthly things, away from all men. And the patriarch is a faded painting, a mural no one remembers. I must leave you now, sweet twin, shadow self. The remembering is the longest of all. And when I drop the tiny glittering opal of my saliva to your lips, you drink it down like a thirsty woman, a hummingbird sipping dew. Fredita, I must leave you now. Into your melon soft ears I whisper, I know you said, I know. And your eyes glittered as if millennium aged coal black and fraught with the violence of transformation, the beauty of death and metamorphosis, like the moment right before coal is squeezed into a diamond, like the moment right before the withered legs sprout wings. I want to be inside your darkest everything. Thank you. I see the snaps. Gracias. Um, okay, so I'm going to read another piece from Provocateur. I'm taking a sip of my um, adult juice. Well, saw let me say that there's, there's a reaction button at the bottom for you folks. It looks like a, a smiley face. And if you um, hit that button, then you can do a thumbs up or the clap symbol. Sorry to interrupt you, Jen Jessica. That's quite all right. Okay, so, um, you know, I'm also a slam poet. I've been a, that's how I kind of uh, cut my teeth in the poetry community. Um, I started slamming in like 2005. I met, um, you know, some of my longtime friends, Danny Solis is on here as well, and uh, Don MacGyver. He was a, a slam master at the time. And uh, I went to an open mic at the now closed, unfortunately, um, RB winning coffee shop and it was an open mic and I had only written like a couple of pieces 
and then was invited to start slamming. And so lucky for me, you know, I got to be on several slam teams uh, for several years. Anyhow, um, here is this piece I wrote. Let me find the, there it is. So usually when I have a lot of alliteration in my pieces, it's an homage to hip hop, but also to slam, right? And uh, usually before I would uh, get ready to compete, I'm not so competitive any longer, uh, be on a team and I do actually coach. We do a lot of tongue twisters, you know, to get ready. Like, uh, you know, New York, unique New York, you know, you need unique New York. Uh, or uh, Betty Butter bought some butter, but she said this butter is bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. So she bought some better butter, better than the bitter butter. And she put it in her batter and it made her batter better. I just had to do that before I did this piece. <laughs> So, all right, so the second piece is called, I have many names, tengo muchos nombres. You may call me Malinche, goddess of grass, indigena woman of the kidnapped clan, Rosetta Stone Tongue, glassy rain soaked imperial jade, Moctezuma's poison trade with the white skinned transgressor, Quetzalcoatl Cloak Cortez, flesh over the forged heat of Spanish blade, the Dutch, the French, the mulatto, the mestiza africana, rape daughters of the doctrine of discovery. You may call me the descendant of the deceased, the disappeared, the pillaged, blood quantum kickback treaty fed by the belly fat of land grant lies. I have many names, thousands years old names, ancient mighty names, but today you may call me seven generations missing from my grandmother, Donaxin, Malinali, Blazo Teo Ometeo, 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 Ometeo. I am the blood lineage, sacrificial ancestor, progeny of the gone missing women. Call me maquiladora, flower of the factories, women of Juarez, twice bit and betrayed both by my own kin and the foreign rapist. You may call me rage, righteous, vengeful. Tengo muchos, muchos nombres. You may call me soldadera. Matriarch of the Mexicana Revolution. I was never anyone's lover. No, Pancho via bed warmer, bullets and braids, hands thick like the skin of Tamal. This is what you may call me. No, yo soy Joaquin. You may call me Yorona, shapeshifter, picket line provocateur, brown beret, skinwalker, woman of the field, hands of callus. Picker of fresa, chile, cebolla, and the grape on the vine. We, the legions of farm workers, bent at the spine, fingers deep into the dark earth. Today, they will call me wet nurse, wet back, under the table paid brown nanny, breast milk by proxy, but I birth me in the shape of me, blade sharp, obsidian, flint and fired stone. I am the bloodletting and the baptismal. I have many names. Tengo muchos, muchos nombres. But you may invoke me, brown skin, puta, chola, chingona, spelled with an X like the Mexica do. My ancestors who run wild in my blood, my mixed, messy, colonized, and triumphant blood. You may call me double tongued and code switcher, river crosser, water diviner, border dweller, and burnt sage. You know me as hashtag me too, the Bridget Care of Frida's brow, snapped spinal column survivor, the late night mariachi hell. Eater of filth, you may call me Pocha, Jota, Bruja, and lit from within. My name in anglicized stain, a deloused campesino somewhere in the middle of Indio, California, fruit basket of the world. But now you may invoke me, Dolores, Lorna, Sandra, Maria, Josefina, Gloria, Diana, the Huntress, Emma, Gonzalez, and Alicia Garza, Patrice, Opal, Audrey, Lord, writer and patron saint who watches over us all. You may call me La Casadora, Huntress, no regrets. I am the keeper of the dead. Tengo muchos, muchos nombres. You may call me Fat Woman, carrier of stories jeweled egg of a diaphanous web. My children spring forth from me, silver-headed, spindle-soft, ready to recreate the world, seventh generation rising. I am un mal flora, the bad flower who grew despite your attempt to rename that which is nameless. Thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, so I don't want to take up too much time, and I know we got started a little late, so I'm going to read one more. This is from Cunt Bomb, and uh, you know, the whole, the impetus behind this book was that um, I love Marty McConnell. If you haven't checked her out, you should, and she's got this beautiful ode to her body, and in this poem, she utilizes the word cunt, you know, which is, you know, it's a disparaging word, but she reclaimed it 
And then I was a big fan of Ignamusio as well. And so, excuse me, I wrote a poem with the word cunt in it and I actually got censored from sharing it with some um, amazing uh, young female writers. And um, so this book kind of was, you know, it, it was birthed because of that to reject that censorship. But I'm not gonna read the titular poem, which is Cunt Bomb, but something for my daughter. And then I'll stop there. My daughter's name is Mia, Mia Mia Sopapia, and she's graduating this year. And she'll be going to UNM uh, next fall. Called The Daughter. The evening that I notice my girl is changing, sprouting with hair into womanhood, I see crisp lines like small black lightning erupt from the inverted spoon of her left armpit. The heat presses against the window, a boiling summer monsoon, and she is a sweat tangle fast asleep on my side of the bed. The butter pallor of the reading lamp permeates every corner of my bedroom, illuminating the salt beads that congregate at her temples. I sit a while and watch her. One arm is thrown above her head as if she aims to catch a pop fly in her unconsciousness. The other arm pressed to the small bell of her rib cage. The arm, a small branch a bird might perch upon. The chest rises and falls like a doughy bread. This is my life's purpose. Monitor the breath, the hair that takes to her legs like a brush fire across California summer hills to move the life body from one bed to another to notice the faint shadow like a dusty charcoal above the lip. I know her body like I know my own. I am prepared to be prepared for this shift, this inevitable change of the cosmological order of her being. I am her ordained keeper of body. And it is when I know that I must let go that the real dying will begin that mother and daughter diploid cells will have truly separated into their own acts of insular creation, that I must step away and watch from the lighthouse that all old mothers retire. Now, I hold the golden meiosis of her body close, this sweaty, sleeping girl who almost, almost slips through my arms and walk from the buttery light and into the greatness of that long, dark, Away. Thank you, everybody. Muchísimas gracias. Thanks for letting me share. And hi, Levi. Welcome, all you arrivers. Nobody's late. Everybody's on time. And thank you, Jessica, for those beautiful words. Thanks for showing, you know, your A to Z, you know. Uh, yeah, um, great work. And uh, you have a daughter who's about to graduate from high school. That's amazing and impressive. Um, so next up we have Everton Mello who um, I biked by your house earlier Everton to give you a, a pre-show um, you know little love but um, yeah I didn't see your car. Anyway Everton and I are neighbors but we don't really see each other. We mostly chat late night on the messenger and other stuff. So um, I'm gonna um, release you to do your sharing, your screen sharing. And um, Everton has a bio, which is in the uh, Facebook event page. Uh, but I'll just briefly say that in addition to being a great new friend, uh, you're a current uh, film study student at SMU in Dallas. And uh, you're originally from Brazil, Recife. Uh, Brazil, now um, making Texas your um, co co coronavirus home, and um, <laughs> surviving and uh, trying to finish up your semester, I know. So thank you for being here um, to uh, grace us with some of your work. And some of it is going to be cinematic. So take it away. Everton Mello. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Tammy, for letting me join this talent group of poets. Um, I'm trying to get into poet, poem, poetry. So um, as Tammy said, I'm from Brazil, moved to Texas about four years ago uh, to study. And I currently live in Fort Worth, but I go to school in Dallas. And I'm actually at my friend's house in Arlington editing a film. That's why you didn't find me at home today, uh, Tammy. <laughs> 
Uh, so my first, I gonna, I write poetry, but I do a lot of poem videos, poem videos. Uh, I'm, I'm more, I like a experimental cinema, um, and one of my goals is to try to blend experimental cinema with narrative in the future. I currently work on some stuff, but I want to share with y'all this first video called "Now You See Me." It was one of my first poem videos that I did, and I will share with y'all right now. I did it in 2018. And it's uh, the link to, it's on my bio, so I can share with you. Here we go. Do you have a choice? I am trapped. How? Why? Liar. Make your mind up. stranger, a feeling, a time bomb, truthful lie, Embrace or escape, resistance, the visitor's touch. Okay, this was the first one. Now you see me. I wrote the poem in 2017, my creative writing class, and then decided to give a visual uh, um, interpretation for film to this poem. The second one is called Disney Aquarella by me. <laughs> it was when I was in, the first time I went to Disneyland and I started having those feelings while I was there. So I'm gonna show the image and then I'm gonna read the poem. The poem is really short. So here we go.
So now I'm gonna read that the poem that goes with that image. Uh, I'm not sharing anymore, right? You guys are not seeing. Okay. Oops, Oops that was wrong. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, give me one second. Uh, where is it? So this is the poem for uh, Disney Aquarela? Yeah, just give me one second. There you are. Okay, here we go. Disney Aquarela by Everton Mello. Ready to re venture life? Is this fantasy? Is this opportunity? Is this wealth? Is this a challenge? Is this a dream? Is this madness? Is this transformation? Disney Aquarela by Everton Mello. Now I'm gonna finish. No, hold on. Let me read this one first. I still have time, right, Timmy? <laughs> Yeah, and what, lang what language are you gonna read anything in Portuguese? <laughs> I, I know I promised stuff in Portuguese, but no, I'm gonna read one. Uh, it's called Retrogress of Progress. I actually post, I published okay. this one in a student magazine, uh, UT Austin. Uh, so it was kind of cool that I had a work published in English over here. And it's called Retrogress of Progress. A burning desire to move forward. In the beginning, powers want, wanted at landing costs, nature, wealth, society, religion, all on board. Some made less than humans, some made gods. Progress arrives, the big become bigger, the small become smaller. Is this, re is this true progress? Some think they have the right skin, and they and think they deserve more for it. Is this real progress? Blood is poured, arms are engaged, fight, war, power, religions not almighty. A voice is heard, tears are shift. Freedom and justice find their path. The incentives, its incentive is spread all around. Bonjour, bon dia, estoy happy, I'm free. Is this real progress now? Women start to decide at least their leaders, not their bellies. A burning desire to move forward until 2016 is born. A monster throws shit in the air for a little bird. Little brains, little brains bathe themselves with its shit and export the idea. In the samba paradise, a clown rises. Art is turned into family's enemy. A society god, a society's god controls bellies, controls what two pussies or two cocks do together, controls the chemicals in one's body, love and respect is, are put us aside, Charlottesville is marked with blood, the clan is back, stronger, influential, and protect. Is this real progress? An attempt to move backwards is unbelievable to be happening. The past stays in the past, Buried but not forgotten. What is next for progress? Is this a retrogress of the progress? Retrogress of progress by Everton Mello. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna finish with another film. It's a really short one that I did during my quarantine time, and it's called Will You See Me? So I need to share the screen. 
Yep, just a second. Oh, yeah, you're good. Here we go. Oops. Your homework. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you see? Okay. Yes, yes. Hey, what's going on? I don't know. Just stay inside. see me if our energy is used to meet on the waves of your ears if our energy is used to meet on the waves of your skin where you see me when your head is rolling over wheels again when your fake happy balloon is filled again where you see me when your mouth filters are down where you see me if the roads are back in order and the oceans of words are limited again, will you see me? So, it's rough. Yay, Dylan. Okay, that was uh, Will See Me. And I think I'm done with all my presentation. Thank you all for all the applauses and for listening to my humble poetry. <laughs> and I, I can share the link of the video. There is actually a really cool video with this one. Uh, Irvi Arcade with Tammy, if you all want to see later. It's not a poem, but it, I mean, it's almost like a poem, right, Timmy? Uh, and I'm going to share on the chat over here so y'all can watch Timmy performing. <laughs> Oops, why I can't do it. Um, thank you so much, Everton. Um, that was a really nice, sublime way of bringing in all the, uh, the trajectory of stuff going on in your mind. Um, and that last one was your most recent finished film when when did you finish editing that one like two weeks ago i mean i did have revised this week before i posted but yeah that was my last one i'm currently uh, editing our our narrative for my first narrative and yeah i work on my thesis project and i have some ideas that you know we, we can talk more later <laughs> are you talking to me <laughs> the ice project and other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Everton also with his uh, housemate uh, has been putting on some really great um, multimedia um, art parties that um, include uh, as well as visual and visual artists and DJs and cocktail, you know, uh, like cocktail, celebrity cocktail makers or whatever, uh, performance art and theater and some other art forms, which I think are really great to be, to have included in that kind of forum. Ikea and Fort Worth, especially because Fort Worth compared to Dallas is a little bit slow. Um, thank you so much. And Everton, feel free to drop all your virtual tip jar stuff in the chat. And folks, if you want to um, uh, check out some of Everton's work, if you could add a link or two uh, or your Vimeo um, 
site is on the the Facebook event page if folks want to go back and look at that. But if you want to put it in the chat, Everton, that would make it convenient for us. Um, all right, next up is Sue Prevost. And Sue, you've been uh, coming and going. You doing all right? You have to unmute your mic. I can't get down to Louisiana to do that for you. <laughs> or maybe I do. Maybe I do have that power to unmute your mic. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I did have that power. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Sue, you want to give us some um, geographical um, context of where you're at? Uh, you mentioned something that was very sobering about the parish uh, not too far from you and the statistic that it bears right now in terms of yeah. COVID-19. So you could just give yeah. us some grounding about where you are at on your end of terra firma. Okay. First of all, I want to tell you that I'm already inspired by, uh, by the people here, the poets, you, Tammy, thank you. I feel pretty humbled to be here. Unexpected gift. Thank you. Uh, and I, I keep getting knocked off the internet, so I'm really glad you're uh, taping this for YouTube because I, I don't want to miss anything. Um, so I'm, I'm an activist with a small group called the Coalition Against Death Alley. So very close to here, there's a hundred mile uh, stretch of uh, land on the river where uh, toxic chemicals have directly been dumped into the river for decades. But now the even bigger problem is air emissions, uh, which uh, from plants like Danka, uh, and Formosa wants to build here. So basically, that area is, is a toxic wasteland, pretty much primarily African American uh, residential uh, folks. And I work with them. And um, we just, you know, we try every trick in the book to be heard and respected. What can you say? I've been doing this for a few years now. Um, and that, so I'm, I'm embedded in, in the here and now, uh, still pretty much creatively enveloped by the confessional form. Because sometimes when you keep having to resist and fight, um, it's a little difficult to move forward. But anyway, I thought I'd start now with my perspective now um, about the pandemic um, and then work backwards in order, in chronological order. So I like going to Lake Pontchartrain uh, and I bring my dog there and it's the one place a dog can be free. Let him off the leash and you know, it's wonderful. It's great to watch. And so with the pandemic, it's of course few people, lots of dogs and and, and it's odd. Okay, so the first poem I have is called During the Virus. Teenagers lean into the open belly of Lake Pontchartrain, receive, open, receive. Their trash flies over the water and the slanted trees in the windless air. You pass them and scold, don't you care? Your dog moves toward the gator in the sun, its mouth open and heated in submission. You gave up revelations for Lent. This is just one picture of you inside what you love. Uh, the next poem is called At the Lake. <laughs> Here goes, dogs tussle around my orange skirt. I'm a flying spoon, a magnetized lover of airborne silence. Leaves tremble like grounded wings. You ask the water what you're worth, then go home to your crying mirror. It's funny because I think this pandemic has gotten me, maybe a lot of other people, you know, you, you begin to question, I, I've begun to question my value, like, okay, I'm not working, I'm not 
able to do it, do anything. So what is my intrinsic worth? You know, so that's what that poem was about. Um, so I'm also a teacher of refugees and I've been doing that for quite a few years. This is a poem uh, about a, a little story that was told to me by a Honduran refugee. All my students have crossed the board. They came uh, alone. They came uh, at, at the time, I guess about five years ago when kids were crossing without their parents. So I have a lot of, I've had a lot of traumatized children to teach and it's been very uh, difficult on, on them to learn a language while they're dealing with memories. Um, this is called As Told to Me. You were both, this is a story told to me by a Honduran uh, child. You were both drinking in the plaza when your friend's tongue hit the dirt. You ran across the field and breathed with the snakes. Crossing the river, you left the old man who could no longer walk. He waved you on, sitting under the sycamore tree. Never turned around when you heard the shot. Now your muscles jump, you awake in the hot Louisiana room where you practice the tenses of denial. I do not, I did not, nor will not suffer. Okay, so moving back in time, uh, when I was- Hey, Sue. Okay. Yes. I just want to give a few seconds for folks to give you props oh. for those. Oh, okay. That's sweet. Because they're so brief, I think oh. I find myself like hanging on thinking mm -hmm. there'll be more and then, then it's over and I'm, yeah. Okay. I'm, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Continue, I please. Oh, thank you so much, Tim and everyone. Okay, this one is called Wavelength. And you know, it's, one, it's about one of those crazy relationships in your 20s. He twirls around in my orange skirt and red lipstick, singing Wavelength, making fun of me. Later, his fingers grab my throat. He's waiting for four words. I'd called him a loser, and he wants me to take it back. The knife slant, ready to pluck. They say red, winning, sirens. They say someone has been here before me, and there will be others. I swallow. I go to the future. I take it back. Wow. And then the oldest, oh, thank you. Uh, the oldest one is, is uh, about the river. Um, I have a, a relationship with the Mississippi River. I was born on the banks of it, literally. At night, I'd go to sleep hearing the tugboat sounds. I'd worry about the fish being run over. And then my, my father had to say, no, they separate. It's okay. And somehow... <laughs> It, the the river and the boats and the fish were infused with prayer time as well. So it took on a spiritual, mystical um, scene uh, backdrop in my psyche. Anyway, so as time went by, my, my family and I, we did everything on the river. You, in New Orleans, the river's everywhere. So you're born on the river, you die on the river, you make love on the river because you're always, usually you're pr always pretty close to it. So this is a poem about my mom, 87, who got cancer and was getting radiation treatments on the river at a, at a clinic. And it's called, This Too Shall Be Water. My mother says she felt the beam of radiation inside her chest in the passenger seat or 87 years of grit, spit, and damnation if you don't pay attention. 
after the treatments. We take the same route home as they did when I was born. All this living and dying on the bend of this river that wants to burst beyond the levees and change the world. In 100 years, this too shall be water and there will be no mark of our passing here. Ah, oh, thank you, Jessica. I can't wait to read your book. Oh, thank you, Tammy. Oh, wow. So do you have another or you, uh, some closing thoughts? Um, You know, hurricane season's coming. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's around the corner and it's, uh, it, this is a time of, of I don't, uh, I'm not sure what it's the time of. I'm feeling a little lost in the struggle of continuing to have to work so hard to be safe. It's been the story since I moved back here from Austin in 2005. And uh, I kind of miss not worrying so much. Those are my ending thoughts. All right, sending you love, Sue. Sending you lots of love. You. Love you all. And yeah, your words are really inspiring. It it's, had been a long while and encourage you to keep writing and sharing. If you want to drop some links or whatever, you know, ways for people to contact you, even an email address, that'd be nice for you to share. Okay. There. If, if you want, that's optional. Yeah. I would love that. Awesome. We're gonna, um, yeah, everybody, you know, take a little um, stretch break for a few seconds. Uh, I um, made this um, mango um, vodka drink tonight had to freeze it because I don't have ice in my yelera. And so um, that's what I'm sipping. Take a sip, water your, mm. your throat. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Wedding whistles, yep. Okay, so um, next up is the um, 17th poet of this month long series, Blast Your Own Breath, the uh, um, National Poetry Month edition. And um, I've been saying, this is kind of silly, but I really enjoy doing things manually lately, like, cause so much of my life is freaking digital, that I enjoyed handwriting this list about an hour or two ago. It's like so much pleasure. Like I wanna go out and pant, I wanna put my hands in dirt. Somebody, another poet yeah. said, put, you know, putting your hands in flour, like, uh, wheat flour or dirt is like the most satiating experience we can have right now. These tactile experiences are really giving me life. And so um, this list basically is, um, it contains the names of all of the poets I read this month. And the last name on the list right here is our final poet for tonight's session. And thank you for making it in, Levi. I know you had to register like 500 zillion times to finally get into our sacred little uh, sanctum here. I'm glad you're with us. Well, thank you. And thank you for being patient. And, uh, yeah, I made it. I'm, uh, I'm online. So it been working 30 years trying to get used to being in front of a live audience. And now I got to get used to this format. So it's going to take probably another 30 years. But thank you for having me. Uh, it's been a while since I, since I saw you last. Uh, yeah, I, I don't travel uh, much because uh, money and uh, I don't own a car by choice. So I don't do road trips. I miss it. But uh, I'm a bicyclist and I don't travel unless it's a gig. And so I've missed a lot of opportunities to hang out with mi gente. And I'm finding that I'm interacting more this way. 
than virtually than other ways. So I'm, it's bringing me a sense of closeness with people I don't get to see often and I'll take it. I'll, I'll take this. Um, Levi, do you want to explain your backdrop image? I'm loving it. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, we're actually sitting in front of my grandma's porch. <laughs> That's the backdrop uh, back there. It's uh, a house that I grew up in, uh, uh, northern New Mexico. The name of the little village is El Puesto del Embudo de San Antonio, AKA Dixon. Um, but that's the house that I grew up in, my grandma's house. It, uh, when I was growing up there, it didn't have any electricity or indoor plumbing or uh, other than wood stove heating. It was very old fashioned. So that was part of my growing up my lifestyle. Wow. Is, uh, is, is this your maternal or paternal? Maternal. Maternal. I, yes. Uh, so Anita Valdez Val Duran was her name. What? Okay. No, 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 esta, esta, no, no, no esta falleció, tenía yo como 10 años, yo creo. Oh. Uh. Well, I'm glad you chose to uh, present us with that image today. That's really nice. And it gives us kind of that New, New Mexico context that um, yeah. we need to be reminded of. And that brings us, me, uh, a, a sense of closeness, brings me closer to that state, which I love. I love Nuevo Mexico, you know. I keep saying if I moved anywhere, it would probably be there. So huh. I, have, I have friends who live in Tierra Maria. They bought a, like a 14 room hotel and they've converted it into a theater space, performing space, and they live there. Huh. So I'll hook you, you up. So, you know, if you yeah. ever want to find a, a play, you know, a stage there or some good people to- uh, Yeah, it's got a lot of history, Tierra Maria and the courthouse raid with Reyes Lopez Tijerina mm -hmm. back in the 60s and- uh, Right, right. All that whole valley is really beautiful. Did you say a 14 room? It, oh. Yeah, it's like a, it was a vacant uh, old, uh, mo I guess, motel, motel, uh -huh. and they got a good deal on it, and they've been slowly converting it into, well, it's not, they're living in it, and it's, it's pretty, it's retrofitted by now, you know? mm -hmm. but I haven't mm. been up there, and uh, they performed a theater work, you know, uh, a Lorca work, everybody does uh, Butterfly's Evil Spell, they did that, and then an uh, Indian, a classic Indian play. So, All right. Muy bien. By the way, I, this is, I wanted to wear this tonight. It's a, a bolo tie that uh, our, our good friend, our mentor, our maestro, uh, Raul Salinas gave me when I read at Resistencia, and I know you were close to him too as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give it up for Raul. Those of us who knew him, saw him, meant, uh, protégéed with him, you know, what have you. Yeah, he's still in our thoughts and minds. Um, Melissa, are you still there? Melissa Morales, yeah, yeah. Melissa asked to borrow uh, one of my books. Uh, was it which one did you get? Was it East East of the Freeway? East of the Freeway, yeah, yeah. One of my local compas. Hey, Morales. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, Levi, you got some poems for us. Um, I think so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have a few poems here. Uh, I'm going to start off with this one uh, dedicated to uh, our incarcerated uh, hermanos y hermanas. It's entitled, I Breathe the Cottonwood. I breathe the cottonwood. I take the sagebrush scent in, the folding hills, the heat of the asphalt. 27 minutes past noon past the historic marker and the twisted metal road sign, the yellow apple dotted orchards, the alfalfa. I take it all in. For you, my brothers and sisters, lying on rubber mattresses in your jail pods, fingernailing the names of your loved ones on styrofoam cups. The cactus flower puckers its sweet magnolia lips for you today. Its prickly arms stretching up towards the clouds and the sky. Las mesas, los arroitos, los barrancos, el Rio Grande. La urraca, el cuervo. The cigarette butt pinched and yellowed the crunched beer cans on the roadside. I take it all in. Past the presa and the remance. The swimming hole where you frolicked in the water with your first crush. 
her hair wet and pasted against the slant of her forehead, her bare shoulders glistening con la agua bendita. Throughout the Hanisaro Valle, las milpas de maíz are lined in processions, their powdery tassels swaying back and forth like Pueblo feast day dancers, atrás, adelante, atrás, adelante, ay, ay, ah, ah. Past the ancient flat roof houses slump like loaves of bread and their backyard ordnos with their black toothless mouths yawning. The acequias lazy gurgle, the tortolitas mid-afternoon murmur, the cleansing cota flower, los chapulines, las chicharras, el garambullo, el capulín. For you, my brothers and sisters, the willow, the mud puddles, reflecting brown, the earth's skin, I take it all in. Um, then I'll do a, a couple of poems here, sort of done in the style of ethno-poetry. Um, and this first one is called The Continuing Conversations of Paw and Falcon Eddie. A man at the duck pond approaches me for a quarter. I need a bottle, he says. A bottle of what, I ask. A bottle of something to drink. Well, what's good these days? Importers, he replies. Mm, well, that's what killed my friend, I say. Oh, sorry, man. He mumbles, turns, and walks away. Three, four, no, wait, five, six ducks skitter by. It's times like these I want to call you up. Maybe you've already brought in a few cords of wood. They say it's going to be an early winter, harshest winter we've had since the 50s. Did you raise any turkeys this year? Thanksgiving's only a few weeks away. It's as if I can hear your laughter over the phone, teasing me about something you say I should have done, or filling me in on the latest death of someone we went to school with. And of course, asking, why I haven't dropped in to visit. What do you mean you don't have time? Everyone's got time, you scold me. Well, I respond cautiously, avoiding the snares you're laying out for me. No, como que, no, como que, well ni well, you say sarcastically, interrupting my excuse. You gotta make time to visit. You whisper, your voice gone low. You never know when one of us ain't gonna be around. 10, 12, no, 16, 17, 20, 21, 22 ducks. How are things going? I ask. Pues tú sabes, you respond. Hay veces que el pato nada y hay veces que ni agua bebe. Because tú sabes, sometimes a duck swims and sometimes he doesn't even have a drink of water. And then here's another one. La waitress. The waitress says she's okay as long as it's not windy. You never hear people say, oh, I love the wind. You never hear them say that ever, never. The wind makes people grumpy. People don't like the heat either. They come in with a bad attitude and take it out on you like you're the one that caused it. I'm not in charge of everything, fishing, music, food. That makes me happy. Pero the wind, rain, el sol, yo okay, que, yo no mando nada. Some people might think I do, but I don't. I'm not the boss of nothing. And then this one, un homenaje también a mi camarada, el Gavilán. Un poema en, uh, en español, ¿no? Está bien, ¿no? Gavilán, aquí estoy sentado en una sieta coja y desplumada, recordando aquellas amanecidas cuando nos fuimos grandes y altos. 
en aquel tiempo que nos encontrábamos sin pena ninguna, cuando la vida para nosotros apenas comenzaba y la tarea era larga y llena de curiosidades, entretenidos siempre con aquel oficio maldito, un traguito para celebrar la vida y otro para disponer la muerte. Ayer, bajo las sombras de los gavilanes que volaban con sus alas estiradas como crucitas negras en contra del sol, pensé en ti, tú que también fuiste gavilán pollero. Con una locura verdadera y aquella travesura sin fin, hoy como ayer tus chistes relumbrosos, Iluminando estas madrugadas solitarias que a veces nos encuentran medios norteados y con las alas caídas. Tal como esos polleros tirando el ojo por el cerrito de la cuerda, así también seguiremos rodeando, carnal. Carnal de mano y de palabra, amistad que nació en aquel amanecer eterno. Y si no nos topamos en esta vuelta, pues entonces, compa, pueda que nos topenos en la otra. Hey, you want to unmute yourselves. Uno más. Uno más. <laughs> There's Uno Jessica. Más. All right. Otra, 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 otra. You know, um, I haven't even. Thank you. Gracias, Jessica. Leva, I haven't even mentioned that you're the the newly appointed and announced uh, poet laureate of Nueva Mexico. I think uh, the first of the state. Am I am I correct in saying it that way? Yes, uh, it's the inaugural New Mexico inaugural. poet laureate. Yeah. yeah. Mm, thank you. I'm, 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 I'm getting used to it little by little. Getting used to the title. <laughs> um, I loved reading that uh, you're going to be getting in an old uh, vintage vehicle and driving all around the state. Wait, wait, t tell us about that. <laughs> well, um, like I keep telling them, they ask how it's coming along. And I say it's at the mechanics. And I say, well, you know, no le falta más de las orillas y el medio, you know. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, well, it's an old Chevy it's, and uh, it is at the mechanics. They're doing some work on it and hopefully we'll get it rolling here pretty soon. Uh, actually, it reminds me of a time when uh, Raul was here in Albuquerque and he was staying here at my house for a few days. And we actually sat in the 58 uh, for about a couple of hours, probably just hanging out and talking. And, you know, Raul was amazing because he could go from these amazing intellectual topics to sit in a 58 Impala talking about organ pipes and rabbit ears and, you know, things related to the, to the cruisers and the lowriders and the automobile in a way that only an insider could have that knowledge. And I was just really just blown away that you could be sitting with somebody like him having the most amazing discussions or he could be in an audience having the most amazing, like I say, discussions about politics or whatever. And then later on, he's sitting in an old car and he can tell you everything about it, too. And there aren't many people that can cross both bridges going back and forth like Raul could do that. So that's sort of the idea for the cars to take it on a cruise, right? What, what kind of car are you taking on the road, Levi? I'm, I'm really curious. What kind of Chevy? Uh, hi, Jack. It's a, a 1958 Impala. Whoa, that is ancient. <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> classic. Wow, I remember that car. Yeah, yeah, it was a feature. That's when the car got fat. I, I, I like the 57 better, but the 58 got fat. There you go. Yeah, it was, the, the you know, on the American Graffiti. Remember American Graffiti, yeah, the white 58? Yeah. yeah. And you so still got that be, thing running. Wow. Are you going to be, Levi, uh, doing readings or uh, collecting uh, poems from people along the way? What kind of engagement activities do you think you might be interested in doing with the hint that you encounter on your on your drive on this road trip yeah well that was the idea and uh, unfortunately you know kind of like it all changed now with the with the virus but uh the idea was to go out travel around the state and 
uh, meet people and record them, interview them, uh, get their stories, their poems, because sometimes stories are just as poetic as the poems mm -hmm. themselves, you know. So I was really interested in talking to people, having conversations, platicas, resolanas, you know, and recording those and um, turning them into podcasts and then sharing them with the audience. And that's still the plan. I think we're just going to have to sort of... Uh, find a different way of doing it inter and period Paul, you know, hopefully uh, we'll get back to face to face and having conversations underneath the porches um, in the not too far away future, you know? And uh, when you come to the term, Texas, oh, I'm sorry, Tammy. Just, no, I was just going to ask, when are you coming to Texas? Oh, pues, uh, a ver, cuando, when we can, when we're able to move around again, you know? I haven't been to Texas in a while. I used to go every year and uh, to Macondo. So uh, I was hoping to go this, this year. It's not going to happen. So hopefully next year. Yeah, I'm really itching for a road trip. I mean, I'd love to go to New Orleans, Nueva Mexico. I'm, I'm just really excited for that opportunity once, once we're not in lockdown ma uh, mode anymore. And I like to say this, and I, I say it meaningfully and truthfully here. I'm looking at all of you guys, gals, peeps and y'all everybody looks healthy mm. all month i've had these readings and nobody's got like the kleenex to their nostrils nobody's <laughs> like you know spitting saliva coughing in the middle of the like, thank god you all look so freaking healthy so yeah what are you choking yourself for everton like no like thank goodness you're taking care of yourselves it surprises me because when i go out on my bike ride i look at all these people walking their dogs or at the river uh, you know, walk, when you're walking around, um, you know, uh, drive time, our usual drive time, and everybody looks so healthy. I'm like, wow, we're all a bunch of healthy people staying home for a month. Like, thank you. Stay healthy. I mean, y'all are some sexy looking people right now. So thank you. Thank you for being, for doing the right thing. And I, I just had to say that. Uh, <laughs> Because, you know, on the media, you're hearing about people who are ill and the sick and, you know, and there's, that's also happening. That's also very real. And um, some of our work alluded to that reality. But um, looking at your faces, this is very fresh and refreshing. So thank you for, for taking care of yourself. I need you. I want you here. Uh, any last comments? Because uh, unless you have one more to close us out with, Levi, um, this is a done deal for the month. Well, I want to say congratulations to Levi. Yes. Hey, Danny, I recognize your voice. Thank you, brother. Yeah, gracias. Hey, Levi. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Levi, and how long is your term, Bato? Your term is how long? Uh, two and a half years. Two and a half? Two and a half, yeah. Two and five? Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they said three, but it, it's really two and a half. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just also want to say that... Uh, it was great to hear the two best poets in New Mexico tonight, so. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you, Danny. Um, Thanks, Mr. Solis. Yeah, yeah. Of course, always. Yeah, Danny read a couple of weeks ago, so, you know. Um, you didn't miss anything. I'm sorry, I missed it. Tammy, so you said this is the last of the series? Are you going to do anything uh, else, like, outside of it? Or? Okay. I love to hear that. Sorry to, sorry to talk over you. Um, mm -hmm. It's easy to do on Zoom meetings, to, you know. Uh, National Poetry Month was the reason for me to okay. launch this and to in figure out how I could encounter my beloveds uh, here in letters uh, through uh, the Zoom platform. Uh, I'm feeling that I'm gonna move to maybe a, a bi-monthly or a monthly um, thing, maybe starting um, next month. And, uh, and I'm gonna keep reaching out to people who are some of my many uh, literary uh, Facebook friends who I'd never get to talk to or see. So Tim, I see you, you know, I see you. I see we got publishers in the house too. They might want to have uh, suggestions for me in terms of uh, voices to um, have predominate in spaces like this. I'm also loving the idea of this not being live streamed uh, because <clears throat> this creates an intimacy and you get first look at, and first listen to some work that's just been, you know, put on a page on a screen. Uh, and I love the intimacy of that. And uh, eventually this will, this is being recorded by the way. Um, yeah, um, and then it's gonna be uploaded as a file to YouTube by tomorrow evening. 
and then we can share it forever worldwide, you know, how that goes. But for yeah. now, the intimacy of this is very important to me because I can see you moving. You're not a recording. You're, you know, I move a lot because I have a bad back. So I'm constantly like, you know, this. And I love that. I love that Maria's been here the whole time. Jack was one of the first to arrive. Denise from North Dakota way. Thank you for representing. Um, we got a couple of press representatives here, small press people or large press. I don't know your sizes, but um, I'll find out <laughs> eventually. <laughs> And, and, and shout out to Marcel Delgado. There he is right there. He's a, a curator of uh, Voices de Barrio here in Albuquerque at El Shante Casa de Cultura and a member of the ABQ Slams. Mm -hmm. um, and just an amazing vato. I just wanted to say that. Please, Marcel, if you want to um, drop that in or Jessica oh. into the chat, that way we remember who we were sitting with um, tonight because every one of these events is like a historical event for me. And I love the geographical context we all give. So we get to see your grandma's house. We talk about the lake and the rivers, the places that bring, uh, bring up the, the counter, counterpoint to despair and despondency. So thank you for that voice and that look. Uh, yeah, I love you all. Group hug. We always do the group hug at the end. You know, I'm feeling your energy. And, um, you know, go on to your blessed, beautiful, healthy night. It's Saturday night. You're going to take a walk. You're going to have something to drink. You got somebody to snuggle with. I have seven cats, so I got work to do. And um, and I don't think I've had dinner yet, but that, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It'll come later. This was the dinner. This is always the bigger meal and to be with the poets. And if anybody wants to um, screen grab this, you know, do a little uh, screen grab of this photo portrait that we've made, go go ahead and do that. That's, that's a lovely thing to do. Um, I'm gonna start, just, uh, I'm gonna hit, stop the recording now. And for those of us that wanna hang out and just chit chat, uh, you're free to do that. Um, any closing last moments in the last 10 seconds? Just blessings to everybody and, and thank you for being such a great host and uh, wonderful audience. Thank you so much. I echo those sentiments. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Gente. And for those of us that have access or um, privilege, you know, there's the Venmos and PayPal's uh, accounts that were shared. So feel free to purchase books as well of uh, some of our, from some of our beautiful writers tonight. Peace and health to all. Gracias. Adios. Cuídate.